Welcome to the fourth part of this pathfinding series. So uh, we've already got a pretty nice little um, pathfinding script working. So uh, what we're going to look at today is optimizing it. All right, so I mentioned in the previous part as we we're programming that the uh, slowest part of the algorithm is this little bit over here where we're uh, each iteration, we're having to search through the entire open set to try and find the node with the lowest F cost. So uh, what we're going to look at now is a much smarter way of uh, organizing our nodes, uh, and that is in what is called a heap. Now the best way to think of a heap is as a sort of binary tree, where each node has got at most two child nodes, and uh, each of those nodes then have their own two child nodes, and uh, so on and so forth. So um, it's worth noting that in the actual code, this is simply an array with the uh, elements uh, sort of ordered in the indices from left to right, as shown here. But now I'm going to swap out these indices for some sample f costs, and you can see that the tree is structured by one very simple rule. Each parent node must be less than both of its child nodes. So we can see that this is true. Uh, 4 is less than both 6 and 7. 6 is less than both 9 and 15. 7 is less than both 12 and 10, and the same follows for the rest of them. Now the great thing about this structure is that if we want to add in a new node to the, to the heap, uh, let's just add one in, and this has got an f cost of 5, so it's clearly not in the correct position in the heap since it is uh, lower than its parent. So all we have to do is we have to check if it's lower than its parent, and if it is, we swap it with its parent. Then we compare it to its new parent, and if it's still lower than its parent, we swap it again, we check it against its new parent, and here we can see that it's no longer less than its parent, so we stop swapping it. And uh, you can see that in this case, we've only had to compare it against uh, three nodes out of the other 14 nodes to find its correct position in the heap. Now let's look at what happens when we want to remove the node from the heap with the lowest f cost. So given the way that we're structuring things, that will always be the node at the uh, top of the heap. And so we simply remove that node. And to fill up that position, we take the node at the end of the heap and uh, we slot that in there. And now all we have to do is compare it with each of its two child nodes. And uh, if it is greater than either of them, then we swap it with its lowest one, so in this case the five. Then we compare it again with each of its two children now. And uh, if it's greater than either of its two children, we swap it with the lowest one. And here we can see it's only got one child and it's less than its child, so we can stop swapping. So you can now see why this is such a fast way of sorting our nodes since uh, as soon as we swap it with one of its child nodes, we're essentially cutting out the need to compare it with any of the nodes in the other half of the tree. So using this sort of tree visualization, it's pretty trivial to see, uh, given any node, say 11, uh, which node is its parent node, it's clearly 5, or given the node 4, its two child nodes are 9 and 10. But uh, how do we actually tell the computer this? So it turns out there's a very simple mathematical way to do it. So given any node, say, let's take node 11 again, we can find its parent node by subtracting 1 to give us 10, and dividing it by 2 to give us 5. And uh, this will work with 12 as well. So subtract 1 from 12 to give us 11, divided by 2, that's 5.5. And the way integer division works, that will round down to 5. So the formula for finding the parent of any node in this heap is simply n minus 1, all divided by 2. Now let's see how we find the children of uh, node 4. So uh, it turns out we can just multiply it by 2 to give us 8, and add 1 to give us the child on the left, and add 2 to give us the child on the right. So the formula for getting the two children of any given node in the heap is n times 2 plus 1, or n times 2 plus 2. So now that we have this insight into how a heap works, let us program one. All right, so let's create a new c -sharp script, and we can call this heap. And uh, we're going to make this class generic so that it's not only specifically for working with the node class, but it'll work with uh, other classes as well if we wanted it to. So um, we're going to say that it takes a type t. And uh, so now, instead of specifying, for example, an array of nodes, we'll specify an array of type t, um, which we can call items. Then we want to keep track of our current item count, and uh, we'll make a little constructor, public heap, and uh, 
This is going to take in an integer for the max heap size. So we need to know at the outset uh, what the maximum size of, of the heap is, since an array is sort of quite difficult to uh, resize. Um, so in the case of the pathfinding, that's absolutely fine, since we can just multiply grid size x by grid size y to get the maximum amount of nodes that could be in the heap at any given moment in time. So um, we'll say items is equal to a new array of items um, with a size of max heap size. Next, let's create a little public method for adding new items to the heap. And uh, so the first problem that we're running into is that we, we would really like each item to be able to keep track of its own index in the heap. And it's also essential that we can uh, compare two items and say which one has the higher priority so that we can sort it in the heap. But since we're just using this generic type T, we don't actually know that it's capable of doing all of this. So uh, this is where interfaces come in. We create a public interface, iheap item. And uh, this is of type T. And first of all, we'll create a little int um, heap index, um, which can both get and set an, an integer. And uh, we'll also say using system up at the top here, so that uh, this interface can implement an interface called iComparable, um, also of type T. Now, if we can guarantee over here that T implements this interface by saying where T implements I heap item uh, of type T, then um, we'll be able to say things like item dot heap index is equal to the current item count. All right, so that's very nice. Um, now let's add it to the end of the items array by saying items current item count is equal to the new item. So now the new item is at the end of the array, but uh, that's not necessarily where it belongs. So as I showed earlier, we need to keep comparing it with its parent and uh, swapping it if it's got a higher priority than its parent. So let's create a little void method um, sort up, which takes in an item t. Uh, and this will handle all of that sorting for us. So now after we've added, added it to the array, we can just say sort up and pass in the new item. Finally, we just need to increment the current item count by one. All right, so inside of the sort up method, um, first of all, let's create an integer for the parent index. So if you remember the little uh, formula for getting the parent index, it's equal to the uh, item's own heap index, minus one, all divided by two. So now we can enter a loop, we can just say while true, and we can create a little variable t for the uh, parent item. And this will be equal to the item in the items array with an index of uh, parent index. And now we want to compare the uh, current item to the parent item. So uh, we're going to be using the fact that it implements iComparable to say if uh, item dot compare to parent item is greater than zero, then. So uh, how the uh, compare to method should be implemented is uh, if it's got a higher priority, then it returns one. If it's got the same priority, it returns zero. And if it's got a lower priority, it returns negative one. So uh, if item has got a higher priority than the parent item, which in our particular case means that it has a lower F cost, then we want to swap it with its parent item so let's create a little uh, method to do the swapping for us. We can say void swap, and we'll take in uh, t, you can just call it maybe item a, and t, not time, t, item b. And uh, so now we want to swap these two. So uh, we can first swap them in the array by saying items, uh, item a dot heap index uh, is equal to item b and items item b heap index is equal to item a. Now we also want to swap the heap index values. So um, we're going to have to create a little temporary integer here. We can say, call this 
item a index, and this will be equal to item a dot heap index, and then we'll set item a's uh, heap index equal to item b's heap index, and then item b's uh, heap index is then equal to that temporary integer we created, item a index. All right, so that's our little swap method. So now we just call swap item with parent item. Great. So now, as soon as it is no longer of a higher priority than its uh, parent item, then we can break out of the loop. Otherwise, we will just keep uh, recalculating the parent index and comparing the item to its new parent. Okay, so we've now got a working method to uh, add items to the heap. Let's create a method which returns a type T um, for removing the first item from the heap. And uh, so first of all, let's just save the first item. We can call it first item. So that's equal to items zero. And uh, then we want to say that we've got one less item in our heap. And uh, as I was showing at the beginning with the uh, diagrams, we now want to take the item at the end of the heap and put it into the first place. So we'll say uh, item zero is now equal to items current item count. And uh, we also want to set uh, the heap index of that item to zero now. And uh, then we need to sort it. So let's create a void um, sort down, which also takes in a T item. And uh, so here in this remove first method, we'll just say sort down. We'll pass in item zero. And finally, we'll return the first item. All right, so in sort down, let's first of all enter a loop. We'll just say while true. And uh, we want to get the indices of the uh, item's two children. So let's create an int uh, child index left. And this is equal to item dot heap index multiplied by two plus one. And uh, for the child on the right, this is simply the same thing, only plus two. Um, let's also create an integer swap index, which we'll be using in a moment. And uh, now we're, what we want to do is we want to check if this item does at least have uh, one child, the child on the left. So we'll say if child index left is less than the uh, current item count, then we'll say swap index is equal to child index left. All right, then we also want to check if the item um, also has a child on the right, a second child. So we'll say if child index right is also less than uh, current item count, then we need to check which of the two children is, uh, has got a higher priority and we'll set the swap index to that child. So um, we'll say if items child index left dot compare to items child index right. Now let's see, um, we're currently, we've, we've first set it to the child index left by default. So now if the child index left actually has a lower priority, in other words, this is less than zero, then we want to set the swap index equal to child index right. All right, so now swap index is equal to the child with the highest priority. So all we need to do now is check if the parent has actually got a lower priority than its highest priority child, in which case we'll swap them. So we'll say if um, item dot compare to items child index, oh no, I mean swap index, um, if that is less than zero, then we want to swap them. So we say swap item with the uh, items swap index. 
And uh, if the uh, parent has actually got a higher priority than both of its children, then it's in its correct position and we can just return to exit out of the loop. And also, if we discover that the parent uh, doesn't have any children, then it's also in its correct position and we can exit out of the loop. All right, so there are just a few little things remaining that we need to do. Um, one is we need a method to check if the heap contains a specific item. So let's create a public bool contains, um, which takes in t item. And uh, here we just want to return a bool. So we're going to say return, and we'll use the equals method to uh, check if two items are equal. And uh, the first item is the uh, item in our array with the same index as the item that's being passed in. And we want to see if that is equal to um, the actual item that's being passed in. And if it is, we'll return true. And if it's not, it will return false. OK, so that's done. Let's uh, also create a little um, accessor to get the number of items currently in the heap. So we can say public int, we can just call this count, and uh, we won't be able to set this, only get it, and we can just return the current item count. And uh, the very last thing that we need to do is just to um, create a little public void called update item, which takes an item t. And uh, this is in case we ever want to change the priority of an item, as we do in our pathfinding, where we might find a node in the open set, uh, which we want to update with a lower f cost because we found a new path to it. We need to be able to update its position in the heap. So now if the priority has been increased, we simply need to call sort up and pass an item. Um, of course, in pathfinding, you'll only ever increase the priority. You're never going to decrease it. So um, we don't need to call sort down as well, but uh, if you, if you want to do that for a um, different scenario, then you can add that in as well. So um, our heap class is done for now, and uh, in theory everything should be working. We haven't actually tested this yet. Um, so the one thing we do need to do, of course, is to make node implement this uh, interface, which was called iHeapItem, and uh, that takes in a type node. And now we have to implement all the things specified in the uh, iHeap item interface. So that's the heap index and uh, by extension also the compare to method from iComparable. So um, let's create a public, um, a public int heap index with a get and a set section. And we'll create a little uh, int over here for our heap index. And in the get, we'll just return, uh, return heap index. And in the set, we say heap index is equal to value. All right. Now we also need a compare to method. So let's create a public int compare to, which is going to take in a node. We can call this. Um, maybe node to compare. And let's create an int for our comparison. So we can just call this compare. And uh, so we want to compare the f costs of the two nodes. So we can say f cost dot compare to. You can see the uh, integer also uses this interface. f cost dot compare to node to compare dot f cost. And uh, if the um, if compare is equal to zero, in other words, the two f costs are equal, then remember we use the uh, h cost as a tiebreaker. So then we'll say compare is equal to h cost dot compare to node to compare dot h cost. Now remember we want to return one if um, if the current item has got a higher priority than the item we're comparing it to. And uh, in terms of integers, when we're saying integer dot compare to, that's returning one if the integer is higher. So uh, with with our nodes, that's actually reversed. We want to return one if it's lower. So um, we'll return 
negative compare. All right, now let's go into our pathfinding class. And before we update this to use our new heap, um, let's quickly say using system.diagnostics, what I'd like to do is just uh, create a little timer to see um, how much of a performance gain we've uh, managed to get. Um, so let's create a new stopwatch. Stopwatch, we can call it SW equals new stopwatch. And uh, we can just say sw.start. And uh, once we find the path, which is over here, we can say sw.stop. And we can print um, path found plus the uh, stopwatch's elapsed milliseconds. And then we can just add ms to show we're measuring in milliseconds. And uh, let's go into Unity. And um, also, actually, uh, this is currently finding a path every frame. Let's just change it to uh, only find it when we ask it to. So if input.get button down, uh, let's use the jump button, which is assigned by default to um, spacebar. So at the moment, um, this should be finding a path very quickly. Yeah, sort of, it's finding it in, in basically naught milliseconds. So um, let's increase the size of the map. I'll change this to say uh, 10 by 10. And uh, let's just scale out our obstacles as well. And um, we also need to adjust our grid world size to 100 by 100. And let's place the seeker and the target far apart. And uh, okay, let's press play. Um, all these gizmos that are being drawn are sort of slowing down the editor. So, oops, I don't want to open Blender. Um, in the in the grid class, I just want to create a um, a little public bool perhaps to say um, maybe only display path gizmos. And if this is true. Um, if only display path gizmos, then if the path is not equal to null, then for each node n in path, um, we can just take this little uh, draw, draw gizmo code from there. And uh, otherwise, we can draw everything. All right, and um, while we're in this class, we're also going to need to be able to get the um, for the heap when we when we initialize it. We're going to need to know the max heap size. So let's create a little um, public int max size. It's just a little get, and here we can return the grid size x multiplied by the grid size y. All right. Um, now, I'm just going to go into my A star object and I'm going to turn on only display path gizmos. And let's see how long it's currently taking to find a path. Okay, so it's finding a path in roughly 24 milliseconds. All right, so uh, let's go and um, implement our heap. So let's go to the pathfinding class. And we'll change the open set from a list to a heap. It's equal to a new heap. Um, and we need to pass in the grid's max size. And now all of this here, where we're uh, getting the node with the lowest F cost and removing it from the open set, that can all be done elegantly in one, in one line now by saying open set dot remove first. And uh, we can save and you're back to unity. So it was finding it in 24 milliseconds and now it's finding it in roughly four to five milliseconds. You can see if we just do this a bunch of times, um, the first time I found it in 11 milliseconds, it seems to be a little bit slow on its very first run, 
but now you can see 20, 21 times out of, uh, uh, out of 30 tries, it's found it in five milliseconds. So that seems to be about our average. So that's very nice. Um, we've cut it down from 24 milliseconds to five milliseconds in this particular instance. And um, because of the way the, uh, the heap works, the sort of bigger our map, the more of a performance gain we're going to see over the old system. So um, yeah, that's a very nice little optimization we've done. And um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do in the next part. Probably we'll look at how um, to start implementing units that can sort of ask for a path from the system and find their own way around the map. But um, yeah, feel free to leave any suggestions about uh, what else you'd like to see covered in this series. All right, cheers.